When you're learning to paint and draw portraits, whether it's by watching YouTube videos, studying with an artist online, or reading books and trying to apply that knowledge yourself, you're going to come across a lot of vocabulary that points to something very specific that you need to understand in order to apply the concept. In this video, I'm going to unpack three different kinds of edges that you'll encounter. The first is a transitional edge, the second is a form ending edge, and the third is a shadow edge. Anyway, let's get into the diagrams and unpack these concepts. I think the one that we should start out with would be a transitional edge. Every kind of passage of value essentially is some kind of transition so that if we have a movement from a darker value through to a lighter value, this constitutes a kind of transition in between uh, two phases. Starting out, we have naturally the darker value transitioning through to a series of values. Now, this here actually constitutes a transition of value. Uh, even though it's very staggered and the edges in between are in fact very, very abrupt, nonetheless, it is a transition of value. The edges or the, the application of the term edge when talking about transition refers to these passages in between various values. Now, if we look at the forehead of this model, and by the way, when we look at this drawing in the first place, we have almost nothing except for transitional values here. There are in fact no very strong kind of edges in between things. There's certainly no shadow edge to experience. But what we can see pretty clearly is a series of values transitioning from one to the next. All of them with very soft edges in between them. We have a transition of values with incredibly soft edges as compared to this transition where we have a transition of values that has a very staccato edge in between each of those successive values. From there, the next one that I think is interesting is talking about a form edge or essentially a boundary, an ending of one form and a continuation of another one. So if you find an edge like this one at the top edge of the trapezius muscle, we also have form ending edges here uh, form ending edges uh, here. Um, even when we kind of zoom in, we can see that we also have like kind of form ending edges here along the eyelid. Uh, a form ending edge is probably the simplest way that you can explain anything in relationship to, to edges to simply say that if we have a boundary, it means the form exists inside of here and it ceases to exist past that form edge. So that's another use case that you're going to have any time where you find a boundary like this. This is a form ending edge and it constitutes basically an overlap of form, right? You can see like I pointed out this one here on the nostril where we have what maybe could be confused to be a, like a halftone edge or a value edge or a transitional edge. But in fact, what we're communicating and what we're saying a lot of times with edges is that in fact, the, the nostril here is overlapping the form, it's eclipsing the form of the cheek, which is behind it, right? Now, if that wasn't, like I'm drawing this little contour line here to express this kind of break in between those two contour lines. If that contour line was more joined like this, we wouldn't have that form ending edge. We would have more of a transitional edge of values like we have, you know, here in this lower eyelid, for instance. So here, anytime you kind of see a sharpness or a particular kind of edge like this, we're talking about a form ending edge. And that, you know, can be illustrated everywhere. I think that one of the things that you want to keep very much in mind when you're talking about form ending edges, is really it is about line quality, right? If I would have taken really any of these transitions inside of here, and look at this nasolabial fold in particular, in relationship to the form ending edge of the nostril. Through here is a perfect example of a transitional set of edges versus a form ending edge. I'm doing the same thing on the nostril on the other side. And in fact, the entire lower plane or lower form edge of the nose actually is kind of cut out in this way. I'm almost using a linear design to describe it because of the lighting situation here, which indicates all of these incredibly soft transitions in between the various planes because of of course, also we have the soft features of the form of a child's face. So really the only edges that I have inside this are kind of form ending edges. The more control that you have over your application of edges and your application of line quality, 
I think the more that you can say, if you look at the lips, it's a good example of a place where I think a lot of people will choose to take that upper edge of the lips and to make that too sharp of a boundary. What you lose out on there is the opportunity to communicate the actual form ending edge that sits in the horizontal center line of the lips here to define that volume and to show also that the form is turning inward into that crease in between the lips. And that means that I use two different kinds of edge qualities in between values. So we have two different kinds of transitions. Here, we have a softer transitional edge in between values. And here we kind of heighten that edge by pushing kind of crisp delineation here that that gives us that kind of form ending edge that shows us the end of the upper lip and the beginning of the lower lip. Now a shadow edge is something that we study in great depth. Obviously, when we're when we're talking about learning to draw properly, we're, we're going to examine a lot of different kinds of shadow edge. But it's another another way to use that term we have. Remember through here, we have all of our transitional edges, we're looking at the edges in between these value shapes, these individual planes, all of these edges, of course, incredibly soft and very different from the, the handling that we would have like along the shadow edge. One of the reasons for this half tones tend to be continuous. Half tones tend to have more transitional edges to them, where shadows uh, will tend to have a continuity at their boundary. So when I'm looking for shadow edges, typically what I'm searching for is an unbroken boundary in between the two. Now, no matter how kind of soft that it gets, I'm always searching for the edge of the shadow. And this really has to do with a light source issue that if we have on our form, if we have a primary dominant source, a single source, we're going to have most oftentimes a very continuous shadow edge that is unless we have secondary sources like say the the plane that the form is resting on, for instance, if that's a very, very luminous light reflective plane, what can happen is that we'll, uh, we'll get some of that ambient light that secondary light can come in and actually affect the shadow edge It can disrupt it to the extent that it almost turns into a, a transition, much like the ones that we would find in the halftone areas, I like to refer to them as having a kind of concentration of value, you'll notice that like all the edges that lead up to these shadow edges are much more transitional in nature. Even when you get to a place where you have a crisp little accent like this, it's very much going to be the exception to the rule, say like kind of 90% of the edges that you're going to find in the half tone areas within the light shape are going to be highly transitional gonna be very soft in their nature. And one of the reasons for that is so that we can pick up that boundary in between shadow and light to describe the shadow edge properly. Because of course, shadow edges, though continuous in their nature, can have these moments where the plane across which the shadow is falling is so oblique to the light source that in fact, it, it catches this kind of raking light. And what I'm talking about here is let's say we have this light source coming in here, if we have one plane that is like, totally facing towards the light source like this, it's going to catch a much stronger kind of clearer light. Whereas if we have a plane that is facing a lot more obliquely to the light source, meaning it's kind of turned away, it catches very much a raking light. And that's where you get these very soft transitional shadow edges, whereas uh, a plane like this or a turning edge like this is much more due to a plane that's facing a lot more the light source, therefore having like a kind of sharper turn away, creating a shadow edge that is, is much more extreme. Whereas, let's say that this plane is turning, even though we have like relatively sharp boundary in between the two here, it would it would create a different edge because the plane leading up to it would already be darker. The shadow edges probably are the kind of edge that gets the most conversation, I guess, because the strong chiaroscuro effects or the, the light and shadow effect that we use in our drawings. But in fact, the transitional edges are probably what takes a lot more work. And I have to tell you that it's 99% like a mental issue. If you never set out to make a hard edge, you will not make a hard edge.
That wraps up this video on the three different kinds of edges that you encounter as a representational art student and hopefully puts each one neatly into its own definitive box. Thank you so much for watching. And if you like the content here on the channel, please remember to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.